Thursday, I get up around 8 a.m. and open the back door to look outside a minute. I've lived in this house in Beverly for the last year and a half. It's the first house I've ever lived in after a lifetime of apartments. It's still strange to have a backyard, trees, a fence, all these things I mostly knew from movies and books rather than first-hand experience. I try to paint, draw, or write something every day. That way, whatever other tedious or frustrating thing happens, I spent a little time making something, having my conversation with the world. Today, it's an oil painting of our attic studio. I've used the same limited set of colors for over 20 years now. It's a short alphabet, but I've barely scratched the surface of what it can say. I share the studio with my girlfriend, Shay. This used to be two unused rooms until we had it remodeled into one beautiful space last year. Shay's been doing a lot of sewing lately. She's made herself a skirt, a dress, and a shirt. She's made me a pair of pants, all from scratch. It's pretty amazing. A lot of time up here is spent not working on new things, but looking at what I've already done. I tack up finished things on a wall opposite my armchair and sit and look. Sometimes this isn't a pleasant process. Other times I see things that aren't so bad. A lot of the time making something is actually spent not doing anything but sitting. I bike to Hardboro Coffee at 91st and Western every weekday late morning and work there till 4 p.m. It's a new place and it's only been open for four months or so. I came in on its very first day in February and got a job about a week or two later. I spend much of my time roasting coffee beans in the back of the store. We can only do two pounds at a time and the machine has to be watched so the beans don't burn. Different roasts call for different temperatures but most are ready around 200 degrees Celsius. I didn't know a thing about this process until I started working here. There's a hood above the roaster to suck up the smoke it generates. Metal filters catch most of the fine dust and chaff, chaff and residue and periodically have to be hosed down in the backyard behind the store. It's an endless cycle of roasting, cleaning, sweeping, vacuuming, then roasting again around here. Customers come in too, but a good ch chunk of our business is from wholesaling to other restaurants. So these filters get to sun themselves out back on a regular basis. I've been drawing on our coffee bags almost since I stopped, started working here. It's a privilege to be able to do a bit of my real job at my day job. I've done about 50 of these so far and I think it sets our place apart from other coffee shops. Where else are you going to get a one-of-a-kind bag with Nelson Algren, Jane Byrne, Hinky Dink McKenna, or Hack Wilson on it? My boss Greg Wilson has a ton of old books here, so there's no shortage of source material. 